All right, so before we move on to the cylinder and the piston, piston ring end gaps and uh, all that good stuff, we have a couple things left to do on our cylinder head here. So we have exhaust studs to put in and we have the carburetor intake boot to install. So let's get on down to it. We can get the rest of this done. So I have some aftermarket exhaust studs, KMS Performance. Uh, anyway, these make it very easy to install. They have a nice little Allen head at the end, right? So I can just pluck them in and zip them down. Chances are yours, if you have to remove the old ones from, if you have a new head and you want to remove the old ones and install new ones, uh, you can just basically take your take your uh, take one of them, flip it, right, and then you take another one of your uh, nuts and put it on there like this. Tighten them together, and then the use the bottom one to uh, extract it out, and use the top one to install it in. And these things call for 24 foot-pounds OEM, but with a 3 millimeter Allen head, there's no way I'm going to get 24 foot-pounds out of that thing without snapping off something here. So the instructions on this one just call to bottom it out. So all I'm going to do is apply some uh, copper anti-seize thread locker, some thread lubricant, and... Bottom them out, tighten them up as good as I can, and that's what we're going to do. So let's get on down to it. All right, so this is going to be a pretty simple process. All we're going to have to do is... And then just drop it like it's hot. Woo I'm just going to zip them all down real fast first by hand. All right, now that all these are zipped down by hand, I'm just going to tighten them up as far as I can without doing any damage to the head. All right, and we'll just call that done. All right, now that we got that under control, head studs installed, now we can move on to the boot. All right, so let's get us that old O-ring out of there and get us a new one. We'll probably want to clean that up a little bit first, so let's get us some contact cleaner. And then, we'll just chuck it in the slot, of course. Alright, then this baby is going to go right on here. We have our nice uh, nickel-plated uh, intake bolts. And we're going to have to remove this guy in order to get that bolt secured right there. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. Uh... All right, and these bolts are going to get torqued down to 9 foot-pounds, which is 108 inch-pounds. 108 108, 
108. And now we can put this guy back on because we don't want to lose him. And we'll just tighten it down a little bit so that it doesn't uh, come off. And there we are. We got our carburetor uh, intake, carburetor intake hooked up, ready to rock and roll and ready to suck some gasoline. And we got our exhaust studs hooked up, so we'll be able to spit out the exhaust on the other side. Woo! All right, let's get on down to that piston. All right, we're finally at the uh, cylinder and the piston. So this is an aftermarket cylinder, which is uh, the same as by Springs. This is by Niche. And again, there's that word. You can pronounce it how you want. Uh, I heard people say niche all the time, but niche. That's what I say in real life whenever I say, you know, hey, it belongs in that niche. Uh, so that's what I'm going to say. Anyhow, say what you want. But what we're going to do now is we're going to measure the uh, the end gaps in here. But since this is a Wiseco complete kit uh, that came with the piston and the rings, mm, they're probably gapped correctly and we wouldn't we don't we're not going to have to do anything to them but just to make sure we're going to measure them and uh we'll go from there so the way this works is this is our top ring and this is our bottom ring and it has an n and an n right here so those will be top so the writing goes up so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what our end gaps should be based on the cylinder size, right? Okay, so what Wiseco says on paper here, so what Wiseco says is to uh, find the bore, multiply it by 0 .004, and that will be your top ring gap. So, this is an 85 millimeter stock cylinder. So if you convert that to inches, because that's what this is in, it's inches, that comes to approximately 3.35. And I measured mine and it is actually 84.9 something or other. So there's no way that I'm gonna get that precise. It's gonna be uh, what it is. So 85 millimeters comes out to about 3.35 inches. And if you times that by 0 0.004, we get 0 0.013. So our top ring gap should be uh, 0.013. So the way we're gonna do this is we're going to compress this a little bit and we're gonna put it down into the cylinder. And then we're going to take the piston and we're going to make sure we use it for uh... So then we'll use the piston to true it up. So now we got our even down in there. And now, since we're supposed to be at 013, I'm just going to take that and uh, measure it. And hopefully it is so we can just move on. Yes, sir. That is 013. So it is what they said, and we can call that completed, and we can move on. This one measures a bit different. Okay, now the way this one works is uh, same exact thing except for it's not 0 .004, you times this one by 0 .005. So that gives us 3.35 times 0 .005, 
which gives us 0.017. So we should have a 0.017 gap here. And once again, this is for the Wiseco piston kit. This is the Wiseco specs. So if you're using a stock piston and stock rings, then use your OEM manual to figure out what your gaps should be. All righty, all righty. So this should be 017 for me for this Wiseco kit. Let's just pop out the 017 and uh, see if they say it is what it's supposed to be. By God, it's perfect, 017. So we can call our rings good to go and we can move on. All right, now that we have those measured, uh, next step, since we have the cylinder sitting right here, so let's just go ahead and uh, put in our cylinder studs. And uh, they are laying right here. I have myself some aftermarket ones, which have some, again, some cool Allen heads on them where I don't have to take the double, the double nut, <laughs> the double nut system in order to get them in and out. Uh, these already come ready to go. They get installed to... What do they get installed to? These babies will get installed to 15 foot pounds, which translates to 180 inch pounds. So they're also all different lengths. Actually, three of the four are different lengths. And you want to make sure that they go into the right, uh, into the right hole because it's very important for uh, torquing everything down. And the way this works is. Uh, you can see the niche logo up here. This is facing like this, right? You got the timing timing chain hole over here. So just make note of that. And the way this works is these two are the same length, right? There's two of them that are the same length. They are going to go on either on each side. Like so. Uh, so horizontal with the timing chain hole are the two that are the same length. That's the way this is gonna work. And what you wanna do with these, so the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you oil up the threads. And then we'll just zip them down real fast right now. We're just gonna bottom them out. Okay, and then there's two other lengths. Uh, you'll be left over with a longer one and a shorter one. And the shorter one goes back here, the longer one goes right here. So let's get these oiled up and get them in. All right, now that we have those in and bottomed out, we can go ahead and torque them. And again, that's gonna be 15 foot-pounds, uh, which translates to 180 inch-pounds, since that's what my torque wrench uses is inch-pounds. Uh, 180 inch-pounds, let's torque them. 15. 15. All right. Now that we got our uh, cylinder studs tightened down and torqued, let's get on down to the piston. All right, so first off, what we're gonna do with the piston is we're going to install one of the uh, wrist pin circlips here. I'm going to put the, the circlip on the right side of the piston first because the left side, when we put it on the quad, will be the timing side, so I'm gonna keep this when we uh, actually install the piston onto the crank I'm going to have this as the timing hole side so that's the reason for that no other reason you can do it either side I guess whichever you feel necessary but I am putting one of the circlips right in here this piston has an arrow and Wiseco uh, instructions say that the arrow goes to the exhaust side of the motor in this case. So this will be the front of the 
the quad right here. This will be the front of the 400EX. The uh, arrow will point towards the exhaust side, which will be the front. This is the rear of the quad, which is the intake. So we want to point the arrow towards the exhaust. That's why this will be the right side. This will be the left side when I'm referring to the piston. So what I like to do is there's an opening right here, right? I like to uh, put the clip on the opposite side of the opening. And sometimes I can do these with my fingers. Sometimes they're not so easy, but what you need to do is just get it started in there. And then once you got it in the groove, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm kind of in the groove back there and these are sticking out a bit. These are sticking out a bit out here. So then what we can do is just take ourselves a, a little pick. You don't want to score up the inside of here though, but. Boom. You can just put those right into the slot right there. This one is a. And now since I went down too far in the back, I have the fronts locked into the, uh, into the groove right there. All we need to do is take us a little screwdriver. You want to be very careful though. Uh, don't score up the inside of here at all. Just take the screwdriver and put it on the, the clip itself and make sure you don't get the back of the piston, just the clip. There you go, and just pop it up into place. Now we're gonna install the rings. These Wiseco instructions are a bit confusing, so I'm gonna hook you up on how, what the hell's really happening here, okay? So, they have this engine front right here, right? Which confuses the hell out of everybody. And I don't know why they put that there. They should have just left that off the diagram because nobody gives a goddamn rat's ass which way the front of the bike is. It, all, it, all that matters is the uh, piston center line. Because check it out, even if you put these on totally backwards, totally opposite, they would still function just fine. But we're not going to do that. We're going to put them on the way they want. But in this case, this is not the front of the bike. The wrist pin goes right here, right? And our wrist pin is right here. And our diagram is going to be just like this. The front of the bike is right here, right at the arrow. So basically, uh, in this diagram, everything is perfect except for the front of the bike, engine front, is actually here. And so what you want to do is uh, the oil ring expander goes, and then we're going to put the oil, the first oil rail bottom over here, the top over here, and then we're going to put the uh, nine, we're going to go uh, even with the wrist pin, we're going to go top ring gap over here and the second oil ring gap over here so we'll we'll explain all that along the way so let's do this all right the first ring we're going to put on is going to be the oil expander ring you do not want it to overlap like this you want these to butt up exactly even right and I believe that it does not matter if the ends are facing up or down. It really doesn't matter. I am only going to, I'm going to face them up only because that is the direction that they are in the illustration. And that's the only reason. But I do not believe that it matters either way, whether they're up or down. So if you have already installed your piston and you realize that you put those down, so be it. Let it ride. Send it. Send it. <laughs> it's all right. All right. So what we do with this one, this ring is going to go right uh, and it calls for 90 degrees from the wrist pin. So the wrist pin goes this direction. So the end gap is going to go down here. The end gap is right here, 90 degrees up and butted against, and it is not overlapping. So that's what you want there. And then the bottom oil rail gap 
is going to be right up here. All right, so what we're gonna do is think of it like this. This is my awesome award for employee of the month in 2005. Woo, woo! <laughs> yeah, web developer uh, writing some code, employee of the month. Anyway, uh, think of it like this. This is the way it's gonna be. 12 o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, three o'clock. So our wrist pin is gonna go nine to three. And top is gonna be 12, bottom's gonna be six. So our bottom uh, oil rail is going to go between one and two. So I like to just get one started and then we'll kind of just walk it around. And make sure we go on the bottom and not the top. There we go. And our gap should be right over here. And I kind of missed with the gap, but that's okay, because that's why we have this guy. We'll uh, hold the oil expander. And we'll slide this guy up over there. All right. And now let's throw our uh, top oil rail, and it is gonna go between 10 and 11 o'clock. So it's gonna go right up over here. We'll get that started right up in there. And then we'll just walk it around. There you go, just walk that sucker around. And our gap is uh, right on the money. Next is our second ring, which is the thicker and the darker ring most of the time. In this case, it is. I believe the OEM ones are the same way. The darker one is, and also thicker, is the uh, second ring, which is the bottom ring. And these work just like the OEM ones as well. This is marked with an N, and the writing goes on top. I don't know what the OEM ones say, but they have a mark also, and they go up as well. So if you're not using a OE, enough, not using a Wiseco, and you're using an OEM, same deal. So the second ring gap is going to go uh, facing this direction with a horizontal with the wrist pin. So this is going to go right here, and we'll just put this. Uh, right in the slot there, and then we'll just walk it around. This one's a little bit harder to do than the other ones, but don't force it and don't break it. All right, then the top ring is going to go exactly the opposite of the one we just did. And same concept. In this case, this is the uh, copper colored one, uh, the lighter colored one. It'll be lighter if it's OEM. And it also has a mark on it. There's an N on the outside of this one. Faces up. Same with your OEM. Not sure what the letter is, but it's there. And it faces up also. So we'll just put this one and we'll get it started. Walk it around. And there you have it. Gap on this side on the bottom ring. Gap on this side on the top ring. Gap over here on the bottom oil rail. Gap over here on the top oil rail. And the gap right here on the oil expander. And that's that. We're ready to shove this dog right on in and get down to business. Let's do this. On to the motor. 
We are finally at that stage, folks, where we're going to put this thing onto the motor and get ready to fire this dog up. So let's get on down to it, shall we? We're going to head to the garage. We're going to get out of this room finally, and we're going to get this dog together. So without further ado, I'm out of here.